So let's go ahead and move on to the current president, Joe Biden. He still Ooh. exists. Yeah. <laughs> That's still a person who exists, yeah. who's supposedly running our country. Um, he is hitting the campaign trail in some limited fashion on behalf of Kamala Harris. Let's take a listen to a little bit of how that went. Let me tell you something. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-American. If you can't announce January 6th, you have no business being president. Now look, Trump hasn't changed. I would argue he's gotten worse. Clearly, he lost the election in 2020. He snapped. No, I mean it. He'd become unhinged. Look at his rallies. Last night, last night, his rallies stopped taking questions because someone got hurt. And guess what? He stood on the stage for 30 minutes and danced. I'm serious. What's wrong with this guy? So there you go. That's some of his mm. messaging out on the trail, consistent with a lot of what you hear from Kamala Harris and uh, Tim Walls. Uh, at the same time, he and um, Bill Clinton mm -hmm. and Barack Obama were all actually at the funeral of Ethel Kennedy. Um, and uh, interesting to see them all together. We can take a look at a little bit of this. You know, Sagar, what did you uh, what did you make of this I moment? Mean, you can see them all three seated, seated together. Frankly, they all look old. But uh, this yeah, was the one do. where everyone was Obama aged so in. much in office. Oh, my uh, God. Obama gives a little bit of a side eye, looks a little frustrated. You know, they're not really, like, making eye contact. Not, you, could, you could see the power dynamic uh, in play here about who is really the one in charge. Although maybe I'm just reading way too much into it, which is most likely. Uh, I don't know. It's crazy that know. Bill Clinton is younger than Joe Biden. I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> Imagine him uh, running for office again. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've talked about this before, but if there was no amendment, uh, 22nd Amendment, I think Clinton, this would be Clinton's last term in office. He would have, he obviously would have run for like five straight terms. He would have stayed in office the entire time. He had a 60% approval rating on the day that he left the wow. That's crazy. I was just looking at the 1996 election. See, that's funny because I always, always think so about. So wild. I always think about if um, there were no term limits, right, I think we'd still have Obama, but no, he wouldn't no, have even no, gotten no. there. He would still never have bit gotten Bill, he, that's he'd, true. <laughs> he'd still be a skinny kid with a funny name who was the elector. He probably would have left the Senate because he was bored. Uh, I mean, Clinton, I'm He'd looking at the 96 probably be working at Uber or something. Electoral map. <laughs> Clinton won uh, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, like Missouri. It was a different Illinois, world. Iowa. Yeah, I mean, it was this a different is crazy world. stuff. He won 379 electoral votes, man. Bob Dole only won 159. The guy was like a king. Uh, it's kind of crazy, you know, what happened to him in retrospect. And then just four years later, in 2000, Gore only puts up 266 electoral votes. Even if you look, discount Florida within that. I mean, gosh, consider just how much things had changed just in those last four years. So it's actually pretty interesting just to think about what it all look like in retrospect. But uh, yeah. with Biden, uh, and what we definitely wanted to focus on here, was uh, Nancy Pelosi and Biden apparently have not spoken since they dropped out, and there's still quite a lot of salt behind the scenes between the two. Let's take a lesson. With Joe Biden since that had happened. That's a couple of months have passed since. Have you had a conversation since? Not since then, no. No. So... But I'm prayerful about it. I, I have the greatest respect for him. I think he's one of the great consequential presidents of our country. I think his legacy had to be protected. I didn't see that happening in the course that it was on. The election was on. Uh, my call was just to let's get on a better course. He will make the decision as to what that is, and he made that decision. But um, I think he has some unease with, because we've been friends for decades. Look, let me just say this. Elections are decisions. You decide to win. I decided a while ago that Donald Trump will never set foot in the White House again as president of the United States or in any other capacity, but as a pre I can't keep him there for going for tea, but as president of the United States. So when you make a decision, you have to make every decision in favor of winning. And case. you just felt he couldn't win? No, I thought his, the campaign that they were on couldn't win. He might have won, but they had to change uh, wh what was happening. And he decided that change would be his 
stepping aside. As you said, you you had been close for so long um, on Capitol Hill, colleagues for decades. Before I was even in Congress, yeah. And now you've told us that you haven't spoken to him since then. Do you think he's not forgiven you for your role? Um, um, There may be some people around him who have not forgiven me for my role. There may be some people around him who haven't forgiven him, so... It's kind of, kind of spicy there. The way she talks uh, is so funny to me because yeah. she really talks like I, I'm running the show. Yeah, it's like a mafia. You know, boss. she's yeah. like, she's like, winning is a decision. And I decided <laughs> that we were going to win and Donald Trump wasn't going to be in the White House. And she's very delicate, of course, about, oh, maybe Biden could have won, but that campaign was not going to win. And I think that's an effort. Like, I, she didn't really care if the campaign staffers were mad at her or like whatever. Right. She didn't give a shit, right? But she's trying to preserve some sort of, you know, possibility of relationship with him and the public niceties, et cetera. But right. Obviously, the big reveal there that they have not spoken since he dropped out of the race. And that's pretty wild. I mean, that definitely reveals that he is still salty about Mm -hmm. her role, probably Obama's role as well. And um, there's also a lot of reporting about, uh, makes sense, some intra-staff conflict between the Biden camps and the Harris camps. Um, We can put this up on the screen from Axios. Um, tensions rise between Harris and Biden teams as election nears. And, you know, on the one hand, you got the Biden people, <laughs> close Harris allies said they're too much in their feelings. They say he wants Harris to win, yes, but many senior Biden aides are still wounded by the president being pushed out of his re-election. He, like, he was gonna lose. And also you were doing him no favors um, in terms of, like, this man can't serve another four years anyway. They're too much in their feelings, according, according to one close Harris ally. But there's also some of the Harris team who are bitter over the fact that a bunch of Biden aides were out there suggesting that she was unelectable. So there continues to be some hurt feelings between the camp. Mm-hmm. We've also seen some, um, we'll say, disconnected messaging coming from the, the Biden side. He gave a uh, press conference in the White House briefing room just as Harris was about to do an event in Michigan, so kind of undercutting her TV c- coverage. Also, there was that whole flap between Kamala and Ron DeSantis were kind of engaged in this like back and forth where he wasn't taking her call or whatever. And Biden got asked about it and said that DeSantis had been, quote, gracious and cooperative. So again, kind of undercutting her there. Um, but, you know, my my guess, Sagar, is that if they lose, if Kamala loses, you're going to hear a lot more of this. And the Biden people will preposterously claim that he would have been a better candidate to win, which is absurd, given what we saw in terms of the movement of the polls and well, how he idled he was. he's been saying it behind the scenes. He's been like, I actually, look at her, I could have won. It's obviously crazy. Preposterous. Yeah, there will be two, like, vibe checks afterwards if Kamala loses. One will be Biden saying he never should have dropped out. That will be the revisionist history. And two will be they should have picked Josh. If she loses Pennsylvania, oh, my God. The Josh Shapiro propaganda that we're going to hear for the next four years is going to be wild. When the correct take is that they should have had an actual Democratic primary so that these candidates Mm might have been stress-tested and voters have an actual Democratic <laughs> opportunity to choose the candidate they thought would be best to go up against Donald right. Trump. That would be the correct take if she loses. But I have a feeling yeah. if she does pull off a win, all of this unhappiness oh, it'll will be, be fine. swept totally. under the rug. Joe Biden will go back. You know, he's a hero. Thank They're going to crown him as a saint and look ship at, him off to Wilmington. Yeah, look you know? at, you Which know, they should do right now. But, forget you know. about the genocide. Don't worry about that. He's noble and great and wonderful and honorable and all of these things. And he's noble and his brain yeah. is still perfectly fine, even though his brain was so not fine that we had to push him out of the race. Whatever. If they win, then that will be the, all of, all of this will be smoothed over. If they lose, these are the some of the contours of the knives that will come out yes. uh, post-loss. I think you are certainly correct. All right. <laughs> hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad-free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show. Help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.